welcome to the second part of politics leadership and governance thank you for staying here you're watching maisha tv my name is Rida Chibet Kering and Bushebi Junior is still in studio and uh, he's taking his water. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Glad and thank uh, for the water and uh, more of it. I'm still drinking it and I, I love it. All right. Uh, our studio number is 0746-999-841. In case you have a question, in case you want to interact with us, text, call or WhatsApp that number and we'll definitely get back to you. You can leave a comment on our social media platforms, Facebook and YouTube, Maisha Television Kenya, Instagram and Twitter at Maisha TV KE. President William Ruto jetted out of the country uh, to the United States of America on Wednesday, September 13th. He visited Silicon Valley in San Francisco where he met the tech leaders of Microsoft, Intel, Google, uh, Apple, among others. Then he later attended the 78th United Nations General Assembly session, among other important sessions while in the U.S. And on Wednesday, he signed at 8.7 billion shillings, which is equivalent to $59.2 million deal with U.S. Foreign Aid Agency Millennium Challenge Corporation, MCC, for the acquisition of electric buses. Let's just analyze uh, the president's tour to the United States and its uh, benefits to the country. Uh, Bushebi Jr., what is the post expectations after the deals are assigned? For instance, let's talk about the 59.2 billion uh, electric bus deal and how will this impact Kenya's high profile debt? Um, the president is being smart. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, uh, acquisition of investments and expanding trade mm. and uh, increasing production in the country, trying to boost the GDP of the country. Like I said, that is his long-term plan. Mm -hmm. And that is where the bottom-up uh, economic plan lies. That is where it is, by the way. Mm -hmm. it, is, it doesn't lie in the, in the miracle. You wake up tomorrow and the cost of fuel has gone down no it lies in the fact of that he's gonna expand trade links mm -hmm. and increase partnerships with as many countries as possible yeah. look for markets all over the world anything that a kenyan can sell can find market any part of this world yeah that that that, that is the whole agenda that i have seen president william ruto pursuing mm -hmm. and uh fact remains what is the aim of him doing all these things? Like I said, every currency is pegged to a dollar. And so he wants as many, as much foreign reserve, as much foreign exchange mm -hmm. to come to the country as possible. Number one, to spur development. Yeah. Number two, to stabilize the Kenyan currency. Mm -hmm. So that uh, to elevate Kenya's uh, position from just a middle income uh, country, to a first class country or mm -hmm. first world country. Mm -hmm. That is the whole aim of uh, his running up and down. He's expanding these markets to stabilize, to try and bring in more investors, more money into the country. It is a long term thing. Yeah. It is not a short term thing. Just because Microsoft has added another product or service or will be developing another product or service in Kenya mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you will begin to enjoy uh, the benefits the next day. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time. Number one, it depends on how the political environment of the country is going to be. Mm -hmm. Number two, it depends on the taxation systems. Number three, it depends on the labor force. Mm -hmm. uh, number four, it depends on the management of, the, of those investments. So signing them is one thing. Opening these markets is another thing. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans taking advantage of all these opportunities to export and sell in these markets is also another thing. So when there's a disconnect uh, between the signing of these deals and Kenyans taking uh, advantage of uh, these opportunities, mm -hmm. if there's going to be a disconnect, this thing is going to fail. So what do we expect then after mm -hmm. signing of these deals? Yeah. We expect the ministers or the CSS mm -hmm. or those who work under various ministries where these markets have been opened, where these investments are coming in,
to now begin to uh, educate Kenyans. Yeah. There must be a civic education mm-hmm. on what markets have been opened, what opportunities Kenyans have mm-hmm. in these markets, so that Kenyans can begin to produce and sell. And then another thing is for the government to provide a conducive environment for the very Kenyans to do the same business. Mm-hmm. One is by looking at unnecessary taxation uh, uh, loans mm-hmm. and, 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 and remove it. That burden has to be a little bit removed. I am 100% sure they won't remove everything, but there's some unnecessary taxes that have been placed on Kenyans. Those ones should be removed. Mm-hmm. Number two, tone down on the political agenda of just crushing the existing investors. Tone it down because once that conflict continues, then this whole thing is useless. Yeah. There's no business that will happen. So when I talk about the conducive environment, I'm talking about the president and the government looking at the environment that surrounds this microeconomy or macroeconomy. And once you've identified these markets, Kenyans need to understand these are opportunities. Mm-hmm. Number three, Kenyans need to be empowered with a conducive environment to do business and produce goods and services mm-hmm. and sell. Because they will sell. Once that is achieved, Mm -hmm. then the goal has been achieved. But for now, it's something to applaud. It is something to be happy about Mm -hmm. that the president has signed these. There's so many things that have been signed even before. Even SGR was signed. (laughs) It became useless. Mm -hmm. It's now a burden to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And so it it depends with now. What next? Are we going to see Akinamosis Kuria uh, telling Kenyans where opportunities are? Kuna rafiki yangu penda kuniambia ba. Mwasha kuniambia manze ni gold. Na kuuliza uliomoka aji uniambia manze ni. We niambie pesa ulitoa wa hapi. Eh? We kama out uniambie boss. Kuna market ya, ya hii kikombe uh, mahali flani. If you produce these things, there's a market somewhere. That is what these ambassadors uh, from Kenya should be, should be saying. Mm. Should be telling Kenyans. That is what CS Moses Kuria and all these CSS will be telling Kenyans. Yeah. Madaktari wanaitajika mahali flani. Nurses wanaitajika mahali flani. So and so wanaitajika mahali fulani lawyers wanaitajika mahali fulani eh what were engineering wanaitajika mahali fulani where the markets Kenyans have these skills they have these services they have these products but i want a market mm-hmm. do we have a market tutakufia Kenya na skills zetu tutakufia Kenya na mambo yenye yenye tunaweza fanya na ikatujenga sisi kama wa Kenya is the government committed to telling Kenyans where the money is mm-hmm. so that Kenyans can go for them that is what we expect to see yeah. henceforth mm-hmm. because those days are, are too many mara sijui haiti mara sijui president from where mara sijui corporate leaders from where there are so many close mm-hmm. to almost 50 those are so many right so uh, as we talk about that i think we should just listen to uh, what the president said when signing while signing the deal of the electric buses we understand that the president uh, met a number of presidents, including the Ukraine president, uh, Mr. Zelensky, uh, who also promised to put some investment uh, in Mombasa. So we wait and see, and we'll be informing you on the same. But for now, let's just uh, have a look or listen to what the president said and what the U.S. company said. My brother, how are you? President William Ruto on Thursday at the Kenyan mission in New York, United States, witnessed the signing of an agreement that will pave the way for Kenya to deploy police officers to Haiti. Again, just to confirm to you. The agreement, signed by Minister Jim Victor and Cabinet Secretary Alfred Mutua, will facilitate cooperation in areas of mutual interest. Three hundred years later. Kenya has agreed to send a thousand security officers to the Caribbean nation to help combat the gang violence that has wrecked the country for years. I thank President Ruto of Kenya's, I thank him for his willingness to serve as the lead nation of a UN-backed security support mission. I call on the Security Council to authorize this mission now. The president called for a holistic approach that includes political, security and developmental consideration to effectively address the situation in Haiti. I'm truly grateful that we have found time to share these uh, few moments with you. <laughs> he said Kenya will do its part in leading a well-resourced and effective multinational security support mission in the country. Uh, the government of Kenya's readiness to work with you 
and the great people of Haiti. Prime Minister Henry said Haiti needs all the support to address human security, humanitarian, environmental and economic challenges framework for today's development. Okay, congratulations gentlemen. Congratulations. Congratulations, Hansel. Congratulations, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you very much. In a high-level opening session of the Climate Ambition Summit at the United Nations General Assembly, President Ruto called on the international community to mobilize resources for the implementation of the Nairobi Declaration. I will use this opportunity to reflect briefly on the Nairobi Declaration, which is the principal output of the successful Africa Climate Summit. He said... The resolutions of the Africa Climate Summit align economic growth with climate action, offering the most effective response to the climate change problem. The Nairobi Declaration defines concrete roles for the global community as partners in this transformation. Global collective action is urgently required to transform the institutional architecture of international financial systems and mobilize the necessary capital that will forge the golden key of investment. The declaration therefore proposes a pathway towards a global climate financing charter by 2025. Earlier, President Ruto attended the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's Goalkeepers 2023 Forum, which tracks the implementation of SDGs. We came to the conclusion at our Africa Climate Summit that it is no longer possible to discuss development, uh, SDGs, and climate separately that these are one at the forum he called for debt restructuring to stabilize the economies of countries in debt distress we need to support these countries extend their tenure of severing debt and give them a grace period that's how they are going to have the possible chance to leverage resources for them to provide resources for development for sdgs and for climate action. President Ruto said it was time the international financial system was reformed to address such financial challenges. Secondly, we need to rethink the whole architecture around financing. I think it is defeatist for us to assume that there is nothing we can do about the current financial crisis that is facing our globe. That's why we are proposing that it is possible for us to reform the international financial architecture, the international financial institutions, for them to provide additional concessional financing for us. He later noted that the current system is counterproductive in driving the global transformation agenda. Got together and found money using SDRs for COVID. We can also find money using SDRs for climate so that we can deal with the possibilities of making sure that resources are found. And finally, the president also attended a forum hosted by Fauna and Flora International CEO Christina, where he advocated for the implementation of a carbon tax on fossil fuels and carbon credits, saying is the key to raising funds to unlock Africa's renewable energy potential. We need a risk analysis framework that doesn't assign measures that speak to climate change unnecessary high risk. We need to be practical, we need to be forthright, and that is why Kenya just passed the law that will facilitate carbon trading. This calculation about uh, carbon credit is so complicated, hardly any community would understand what the hell is going on. And finally, they get the short end of the stick. President Ruto and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau explored new ideas for funding climate action and reforms in the international financial system. They also committed to expediting the bilateral labor agreement that will open up new job opportunities for a skilled and industrious youth. The President and Barbados Prime Minister, Miyamo Motley, agreed to campaign for reforms in risk profiling of developing countries. And the head of state held talks with the managing director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Jojiva. You know that I would like No, I know that. 
the president commended the Development Finance Corporation DFC for facilitating the private sector investments amounting to 863 million US dollars to support Kenya's healthy systems, SMEs, agribusiness and logistics. So that communities, people like yourself, civil society organizations, many other actors in that space can have the leverage to work in a structured manner because today we do not have a clear framework on carbon trading and many communities are being taken advantage of by people who, uh, you know... Reporting for Misha Television, I'm Emmanuel Wabomba. Uh, I know that uh, we do not have currently... All right, that is U.S. President Joe Biden praising uh, President William Ruto and Kenyans are talking. What is the unspoken message uh, that gesture? The unspoken message, number one, is to Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is telling Raila Odinga that we have a vote of confidence in the presidency mm -hmm. of William Ruto. Mm -hmm. You see, Raila Odinga is the one who's been saying he does not recognize President William Ruto as president. But the U.S. is telling Raila Odinga, listen, this is a, a vote of confidence mm -hmm. in this man. That is why to me, I even look at uh, the bipartisan talk and I, I see it as a waste of time. On the agenda, uh -huh. that's it. Because the United States will do everything to protect William Ruto. The United States will do everything because President William Ruto will protect the in interests of uh, the United uh, States. Mm -hmm. And so they will not allow any form of uh, disturbance uh, in his presidency. The only thing that might come out of the bipartisan talks after that praising of uh, mm -hmm. President William Ruto by US President mm -hmm. Joe Biden mm -hmm. is the formation of the office of the opposition leader. Because as much as the uh, U.S. praises President William Ruto, they also know the element of recklessness enshrined in the person of uh, President William Ruto. They don't trust him like they trust you 100%. No. So they need a checkmate. Somebody they can use to check President William Ruto. And that is why I even told you the narrative of... Uh, Raila Odinga the sixth could be coming from the other side mm -hmm. because William Ruto requires tough, ruthless opposition. Otherwise, anything less than that, you can, I mean, we all know. We don't even need to describe our president. We know him. Wakati alisema mambo ni matatu, everyone was shaking. Uliona vile makesi zilifutwa immediately kutoka kwa makot za mumia sugar. Mm -hmm. So this is a man who is known for his uh, extremism. He can go to the extreme. It takes mm -hmm. a checkmate to stop him. And that is why the US is sending a message of confidence uh, to acknowledge President William Ruto as the president of Kenya. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, pushing for the office of the opposition leader mm -hmm. as a check to the presidency of William Ruto. Yeah. And so this to me is the unspoken message mm -hmm. to Kenyans mm -hmm. and to everyone. Mm -hmm. If you go back, you remember how there was an altercation between Raila Odinga and ambassador, US ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman. Yeah. When Meg Whitman came to openly declare that the 2022 general election was the fairest, the most transparent election that ever happened in Kenya. What was she saying? She was saying, Raila Odinga, President William Ruto is the president of the Republic of Kenya and we acknowledge it. And immediately during the, it, it happened during the uh, governor's conference in Eldoret, Raila Odinga the next day came and called the ambassador, US ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman, 
a rogue ambassador there was an open exchange open exchange and so the game continues in US the US president himself mm -hmm. comes out to echo the very things that the uh, US ambassador to Kenya said yeah. and so that is the unspoken message i don't i don't know why everybody is not seeing that <laughs> that the US is going to do everything and anything to protect the presidency of William Ruto mm -hmm. but it does not mean that US is against Raila Odinga mm -hmm. they require a checkmate for the presidency of William Ruto and the only person who can provide that service to mm. United States Israel Odinga, Israel Odinga. <laughs> well, all right, you've heard that from Bushebe June, you're watching PLG, politics, leadership, and uh, governors. Well, moving on, but still uh, in the United States, we understand that uh, our leaders are, are there uh, or are there. Rachel Ruto, the first lady of the Republic of Kenya, uh, invited Benny Hinn, a very known preacher from the United States, for a nationwide crusade paid by the government. Before you just uh, talk about it, let's uh, listen into this video. And so on. But something amazing happened just about, goodness, maybe four weeks ago or so. The first lady of Kenya flew from Nairobi with her team, with her team, just for one reason, to ask me to come back to Nairobi for a nationwide nation government sponsored crusade now we haven't had that in a long time where the uh, first lady of a nation comes and says we want to hold a crusade sponsored and supported by the government the only time i think we've ever had that was in uh, where was that Marie? indonesia somewhere papua papua and but and then uh, same same time came with her robert ganja from uganda and they want to do two crusades in each country so i said okay lord you still have a little more for me all right that is uh, the u.s preacher benny in and kenyans have reacted on the same and i will leave bushay bujina to react on the same <laughs> um state-sponsored crusade for pastor benny hin mm -hmm. in fact it's a nationwide uh, crusade, crusade. Mm. fully paid by the government of by kenya the taxpayer. Yeah. by the taxpayers mm -hmm. money um i'm trying to think of a, a constitutional provision for <laughs> the exchequer to allow taxpayers money to sponsor mm -hmm. a gospel crusade na national gospel crusade mm -hmm. i don't know if there's any but uh i do believe that uh, the first lady is rich enough to sponsor that uh crusade all by herself mm -hmm. i just want to believe maybe it might have been a miscommunication of some sort where the state sponsored tag was placed when Benihin was talking mm -hmm. just because it was the first lady of Kenya who invited him uh, I, I want to believe that uh, uh, could be the case yeah. or would be the case but I don't see evidence against it uh, this is the thing I see a recipe for chaos. Uh, if such a thing could happen and uh, taxpayers' money is used to sponsor that nationwide mm -hmm. crusade. One, someone might go to court mm -hmm. and say, I don't pay my taxes for, for this. Of what value is it? Is it a service that Kenyans need? Mm -hmm. Is it a service that a Muslim needs? Mm -hmm. Is it a service that a uh, Hindu needs? Is it a service that other quarters of the of the Republic need? Or is this a service for Christians? Mm -hmm. So somebody may argue that in court. 
and it can end up being a crime. Why are you using taxpayers' money mm -hmm. to fund uh, a selected group of people in the country? Mm -hmm. Now the problem is that Kenya is a Christian country according to our theory in our heads. Yeah. But, but constitutionally, but <laughs> Kenya is a secular country. Yeah. And so just because we love God and we go to church and we have Christian names, I wish that would have been put in the constitution mm -hmm. that Kenya is purely a Christian country. It would have served better. If mm -hmm. you sponsor such a crusade, then people have no problem. Mm -hmm. But you see, a secular state simply means secular. Let me define for you what secular is. Secular means without God, devoid of God. That is what secular means. God out. We are we. We are humans, let's look for ways and means to survive as human beings. Mm -hmm. When you bring in the issue of God, then secular stops being secular. Now it's a religious thing. Mm -hmm. So secular means devoid of God. So Kenya being a secular state, devoid of God, mm -hmm. according to the constitution. That is where the recipe for chaos might show up. Mm -hmm. But I am fully, 100%, in my opinion, in support of uh, what the First Lady is doing. Mm -hmm. Even if it were another religion doing the same, and it's for the good of the people, we would say, we would still support. Personally, I, I would support. And I, I don't see a problem. But where the problem is, with the, it's with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It's with the Constitution. Is it going to be a function of the office of the first lady, mm -hmm. paid by taxpayers' money? Or it's going to be a function mm -hmm. of donations from Christians and led by the first lady of the Republic of Kenya? Mm -hmm. I do believe uh, President William Ruto and uh, his family, yeah. uh, they have enough money to sponsor any crusade not just nationwide crusade, worldwide crusade. They have enough money to sponsor that thing. So the question of whether taxpayers' money, I think that is what First Lady should deal with as fast as possible mm -hmm. to, to, to stop uh, the demonizing of this activity. Yeah. To st you see, this is what killed the, the other ministry that uh, the First Lady had started mm -hmm. in uh, State House uh, of prayer and fasting and you know trying to reach out. You see, she has a ministry. She, she wants to reach out. As much as she's the first lady, she, she has a calling to do something for God. But you see where the conflict is coming in. It's a conflict of interest. This is a secular state, and mm -hmm. you're a leader in that secular state, yeah. and at the same time, you're a religious leader. Mm -hmm. So when you want to perform your religious functions, it colludes. I mean, it's like the devil on this side and, and God on this side. It, it's a battle. It's a kingdom, kingdom battle. Mm -hmm. Two kingdoms are fighting. Yeah. And so I think the earlier she comes out to clarify, to clarify mm -hmm. on that issue so that when Benihin comes to the country, mm -hmm. it, it won't end up being the morning show talk <laughs> in every media house and uh, the talk on streets. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually it becomes a resistance she, has, she never ever experienced or, uh, or ever thought of uh, experiencing. Mm -hmm. But I applaud the first lady, the second lady, and those people who are pursuing uh, their calling, apart from just being secular leaders, leading the people, uh, Kenyans look up to the first family for family morals uh, mm -hmm. and uh, other things. Yeah. And I think she's going; she's showing uh, right leadership in mm -hmm. the direction that she she has taken. Mm -hmm. One last thing is uh, the person of Benny Hinn as mm -hmm. a pastor. You see, the same way we talk about. Uh, preachers in Kenya. The same way many Kenyans cannot listen to some preachers, and many preachers by the way. Mm -hmm. The same way Kenyans demonize uh, preachers. Mm -hmm. It's the same way the Benihins, the Joel Austins, and these other guys are demonized in their own countries. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, just as much as you say your own preachers are controversial, yeah. Benny Hinn is also a controversial preacher. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there's a doctrine of uh, kupanda mbegu where he came out and said, uh, you know, I was wrong in this thing. There's nothing like planting a seed and God blessing you. He repented and asked people to forgive him and God to forgive him. Two months down the line, he was back at it again. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a number of doctrines yeah. and teachings that Pastor Benny Hinn has been uh, propagating, mm -hmm. uh, especially in terms of uh, soliciting money from, from people. The, yeah. And the, there have been allegations of uh, fake miracles and all those things, just for the sake of, uh, you know, getting money. Mm -hmm. So, Benny Heen is a, is a controversial preacher, in short. Mm -hmm. He's a controversial, extremely controversial preacher. It's, it's not that uh, it's, a, it's a preacher. Uh, and, and, and show me any, any preacher who is not con controversial. Mm -hmm. That is not a point to mean that he should not carry out uh, the crusades in the... In the, in the country, country. Mm -hmm. he, he he is allowed. He can do that, as long as it does not infringe on the rights of other Kenyans. Yes, then that is uh, possible. Mm -hmm. All right, but Bushobi Junior, some Kenyans argue that we have preachers. We have powerful preachers from the country. Why go for a preacher from the United States? Simple, Mzungu. <laughs> a Kenya utasikiza Mzungu lakini yeah, Mzungu. Hakuna kitu ingine. We worship white people. We worship white people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you want any door to be opened, find a white person as a bodyguard. Akipita tu amevaa hizo hizi vitu kwa you, you, you see that whenever president William Ruto goes to uh, uh, the US ama Raila Odinga and then they assign them those uh, FBI guys or what do they call them? Mm -hmm. Walking around with those things in their ears. And uh, you see the photos taken and how social media goes wild. Have you seen, eh? Have you seen so and so? Eh? He's being guarded by. As long if you saw a black a black person, just black like you, looking like you and me, those photos won't be trending. Mm -hmm. So the issue here is that we just worship white people. Mm -hmm. There are enough preachers in Kenya. There are people who they may not have the biggest of churches. They may not be the most known people, but God has remnants in, 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 the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she tried that when they were praying for rain and uh, mm -hmm. fasting for uh, change in the economy. And you saw what Kenyan said, including the opposition led by Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. They said, huku, kuomba, huku, sijui nini. They have turned state house into a church. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a public facility. We'll kick you out of that place if you continue with that nonsense of uh, religion. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that there are no preachers in the country. Yeah. I think the problem is in the way the first lady is doing this thing. I think the problem is in the way. And I would wish if she has a team that helps her mm -hmm. to organize for these things. I think that team is letting her down. That team is not really organizing these things in the right manner. Mm -hmm. Because she, she, she doesn't have to be the one inviting Benihin. Benihin can be invited by, by a team. preacher. Mm -hmm. A preacher from the country. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But in real sense, she's the one who invited Benihin. Mm -hmm. And she can attend that. And Benihin can just, there will be no talk. People will just repent and pray <laughs> with Benihin. And you know, God is good. And mm -hmm. everything will be quiet. Mm -hmm. But you see now she's at the forefront doing all these things all by herself with political implications. Mm -hmm. That is what is not being put into consideration. So yeah. at the end of the day, you find that it tarnishes the mm -hmm. name of the church mm -hmm. rather than glorifying the name of Christ. Yeah. That is why I think the problem is because there are enough preachers. Don't tell me there are no preachers. There are good preachers. Mm -hmm. There are people who believe in God, who are righteous, whom God has called and said, but who cares? Who will listen to them? Who even cares about them? The preachers, and in fact, in Kenya, we have a problem. We have a problem, not just the Wazungu. See Wazungu to Nabudu Pekeake. Kenyans even worship Nigerian pastors. <laughs> if you saw Ni a Nigerian it, pastor. It is, uh, and he said that uh, Prophet Akubali, wow. Ah, Achana na Mambo, ya Prophet. These are not prophets. <laughs> I'm talking about pastors, pastors preachers. Yes. This I is crazy. Wow. 
you can just see the, the, the church politics playing. People worship Nigerian pastors like crazy. Oh, the same thing the Nigerian pastor is saying is the same thing your pastor said on Sunday. Your pastor said God will bless you on Sunday. You didn't say amen. A Nigerian pastor comes and says God will bless you. You say amen, you shout, you want to throw yourself through the window just praising God. Just because a Nigerian preacher mm -hmm. said the same thing. What is the difference? Mm -hmm. It's a mentality. We need an attitude deliverance. A mental deliverance. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a problem. Sasa benihin, benihin, kwani hakuna mapasta inyone, hiko, lakini, ni muzungu. Sasa tutafanya nini? Atakuwa na impact kwa inji. Eh, hey, like some more hope, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. but, but God has blessed Kenya. The other day there was Don Moen, uh, who was there. There's, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's been, uh, is it Rema Fest? Yes. 2023. Mm -hmm. I saw Pastor Joshua Selman. I saw Fanero from Uganda. Yeah. Uh, Selman comes from Nigeria. Uh, I've seen Pastor T. I've seen uh, some notable preachers from Kenya. That would be the best platform for the first lady. Mm -hmm. That would be the best platform. All those millions of shillings you are taking to Benin. Peleka uko. Peleka uko. Toa zadaka uko. Hii watu wanataka kujenga makanisa, hii watu wako na mashida, hii watu support them. Eh, support them. Mm -hmm. Enda uko, wachana na uko nje uko. Uko uko wewe wachana wewe. Wewe ni mzungu. The problem is ni mzungu. Hapo ndio penye kizungumzo hapo. Hapo hapo ndio jida iko. Well, so Kenyans have really reacted on uh, the first lady's move to invite a televangelist Benny Hinn for a government sponsored nationwide crusade what do you think of the same what is your view on the same uh, as Bushebi junior said maybe the way the first lady did was wrong uh, no, or maybe no. the procedure the procedure maybe uh, uh, let me clarify that yes what the first lady is doing <laughs> is good is absolutely explicitly right mm -hmm. What I'm saying is she is a secular leader, a religious leader, mm -hmm. and the first mother in the country. Yeah. Where the conflict, when I say secular leader, I mean she's a political, she's the, she's the first lady of the republic. She occupies a secular office. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So you're occupying a secular office. At the same time, you're occupying a religious office. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're the mother running the first family. Mm -hmm. Okay? So with that, there is a conflict of management of things. Mm -hmm. When you want to expand your religious calling activities, mm -hmm. it's going to collide with your secular office. Okay? Remember in that office that uh, you are in as a first lady, mm -hmm. you are in charge or you're on top or you're a leader of devil worshippers, you are a leader of witches and sorcerers, you are a leader of makafiri, zimata, mm -hmm. you're a leader of prostitutes, you're a leader of holy people, you're a leader of the Hindus, you're a leader of the Muslims. It cuts across. It's a secular yeah. office. Okay. So when you decide now to expand your religious activity, automatically it will collide with your office of the first lady. Yeah. That is why you see the argument of how can you use taxpayers' money mm -hmm. to facilitate an exclusive religious activity mm -hmm. which excludes other religions okay and only focuses on one religion mm -hmm. okay yeah. yet you are the first lady the leader of all of us why are you doing that number two on which law are you doing that yeah okay so the conflict that's where the conflict is whatever mm -hmm. she's doing is right mm -hmm. that is why i gave an example and said perhaps maybe a platform like rema fest mm -hmm. okay she can use that so people will think those those ones who are opposed to this will think it is Ramafest that invited Benny Hinn. When actually it is the first lady who invited Benny, Benny Hinn. Mm -hmm. So that is the, where the conflict is. I didn't say 
I am a supporter of the gospel. I, I support the, I have uh, never been ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never and I'll never be. I think that is well clarified there by Bushebi Jini amejitetea na na mimi kwamba ameeleweka yale ambayo alimaanisha. I think that brings us to the end of today's discussion PLG. We we'll, we are here to inform you, educate you and entertain you. Uh, stay tuned uh, on our daily bulletins that is my prime news on monday to friday at 8 pm and 9 am to be informed of what is happening in the country and beyond we have the programs the drift on monday we have women talk on wednesday we have special report every uh, monday to friday at 2 pm stay tuned to be informed of what is happening in the country and beyond i'm Rita Kering Chibet and my guest today was Bushebi Jr Thank you for staying here. Thank you for staying with us. Bye bye for now.